Welcome back to a Game of Thrones mod, and as you might remember last episode, I accidentally conquered the whole of the Iron Islands, as you do. So, Euron tried to throw us in prison, just a quick recap. Euron tried to throw us in prison, and we accidentally declared an offensive, aggressive war in retaliation. I didn't realise that, I just thought it was a defensive war that we were trying to stick up for ourselves. Turned out, it was to take the whole of the Iron Islands, which we've done. So, we are now the Lord Magister, we've taken back the whole birthright, but we've still got a long way to go. Firstly, I've got a sort of plan in, 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 in action, so bear with me here. Firstly, we've got to stabilise the realm. Obviously, a lot of our vassals are a different culture and a different religion to us. Or at least, a, a slightly different culture and religion to us. So we need to go around proselytising and booming prosperity so that we can... Uh, so that we can potentially convert provinces to our culture a lot easier. After that, we well, once we've ensured of our vassals are at least not going to try and kill us immediately... We need to try and get independence, because right now we're very much limited by what we can do by the Iron Throne still being our liege. So we can't, you know, I can't revoke titles or set our own laws at all, but we also can't go raiding or reaving anywhere, let alone, you know, within the Iron Throne land. So if we can get independent, we can do that. And we can actually, you know, play as we were meant to play, as, as Ironborn, more or less. So I don't know how exactly we're going to go about doing that, because unfortunately the kingdom is quite stable. Um... Everyone likes Queen Jocelyn the Eagle. She's a pretty good ruler, actually. I think we pretty much just got to wait for her to die and have a more tyrannical ruler. Like this guy, for example. He's pretty good. Paranoid, ruthless, cruel, envious. He'll do the job fine. Hopefully, he'll um, make the whole thing collapse. And then we can make our move then. I think what we really need to do is be sowing dissent, making vassals, you know, not like one another, driving houses against each other, and then... Declaring a civil war alongside them so that we can try and get our independence that way. That's probably the safest way we can do it. After that, obviously, we've got to conquest the uh, Riverlands, the Trident, take back Harrenhal, which is our sort of true capital for our empire. At that point, that's where I wanted to be done. That was sort of the ultimate goal for the campaign. That's going to take a very long time. Maybe we'll go for the Iron Throne, but that will be really difficult. Anyway, what we've got to focus on now, in the short term, is making sure our house doesn't die. Because as you might remember, um, we sort of went through a pretty large war. Everybody died in the dungeons of Lord Paramount uh, Euron Greyjoy. It was at the time. And then obviously his successor, which was Victarion's son. Who was... Uh, what happened to him? Was he executed? I think he was executed. I don't know where he is now. Um, it, anyway, Pike is not his. It turns out it's actually... Oh yeah, there he is. Was hanged on the orders of Lord Magister Jolly Roger. So I assume when that was when the war ended. I don't remember doing that, but maybe I did. I don't know. Um, he actually married off matrilineally, which I didn't realise, to a member of House Greysong, who was Gilded River, Gilded Kraken. So that means that now, a member of our religion and faith hold Pike and all three of those provinces, which is great for going to help us, obviously, convert the provinces a lot quicker. It's going to help us out in the long term. I would like Pike for ourselves, because Pike is a great province. It's got that huge fortress, lots of different holding slots. It actually has the modifier Pike, which gives it, you know, levy, taxes, things like that. It's a good province to have, but it would also mean killing off one of the subscriber houses that you guys suggested. I feel like that's a bit mean. I'm not going to do that so much. Unless, are there other survivors? Are there other members of your family I can kill off? Oh yeah, there are. Alright, well let's try and take Pike then. Let's have a bit of child murder. Uh, yep, I will be killing off Lord Andric of Pike. So who is his heir? It is actually the, the Master of House Greysong. Huh. So unfortunately, if we kill him off, it won't actually do anything for us. Um, We could plot to incite revolt when he's older. That would give us a revocation reason. Besides that, getting Pike's actually going to be pretty difficult. Unless we fabricate a claim on it, of course, because then we will legitimately have a legal reason to revoke it. Because we shouldn't technically have any claims on it at all, because it's not a whole house. It's always been a Greyjoy house, so... What a house name. Alright, let's get to building our house back up, because that's sort of the main thing here. I imagine the character we're playing as now won't stick around much longer. So we need to ensure that our son... I did remarry him, that was the first thing I did before we unpaused. Just to ensure we could start getting some more members of our house. Because if we go to House Hall here, five living members, including ourselves, that gives us our son, his daughter, and his other son, and then one bastard member of our house. It's not looking good. Pretty much all the legitimate descendants are of Elrang here. So we've got to be really, really careful we don't end up with a game over. And let's see if we've got... Have we got auto stop plots turned on? We have. 
Um, let's not bother killing Euron. Who's Euron Pike? Oh, he's Greyjoy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Carry on killing him. Um, Lord Paramount Jocelyn Baratheon is seen to have Lord Paramount Justin Baratheon if the Stormlands arrested. That's her husband. Okay, sure. A brave move. Why not? Weird. Okay. So, what do we want to do now? Well, we can change our focus, which we might want to do. We might want to go for, say, theology to help boost, um... Gilded Reaver, but I think our main focus to start off with should be flipping it from Gilded Kraken being the majority religion, which would make the Drown God religion a heresy. That's my sort of ideal goal right now, so I think we've got a guy proselytizing already, but let's just, uh, Pike's probably the most valuable province so far. Is there anyone we can revoke titles from? Any potential, uh, any potential vassals that are going to cause us issues? Now, House Dagon are still... Ironborn Gilded Kraken. Hmm. I've actually got a lot to do here. This guy's 67. He's still alive. That's quite a surprise to me. Can we get to the final level of the Alchemist Guild is the real question. Because obviously that would give us access to something called a rare elixir. I'm not sure if we can keep that in our artifact or... Uh, in our uh, treasury, sorry. That'd be a pretty useful artifact to keep around for other members of the house. So the other thing I did between this episode and the last one. Oh, we had another member of our house. That's pretty good. Between this episode and the last one was test out whether or not we can improve holding. Which we can, luckily enough. So I've mentioned this before. Improve holding is a long tail scale task designed to upgrade the sort of base level. So, um, small ironborn village, here it is. So this is now upgraded to a medium ironborn village with all of those extra bonuses. It allows us to build better um, buildings in these provinces. It also gives us access to different, you know units things like that as it progresses but because there's no technology the way they balance that is by making it so you have to improve the holding with your steward we've got a really good steward it's our son funnily enough elrang 93 percent chance yearly of it being improved however obviously it is a tax malice and a levy malice whilst we wait for that to upgrade hopefully it'll be done within a year i think that just means the meantime to happen is around a year uh, when we had escaped from Queen Jocelyn's wedding, we had shattered the Pale Ale... Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's me reading that wrong. We shared the Pale Ale Sir Gilbert bought and talked about our mutual dislike for Queen Jocelyn. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. Oh, we like this guy now. That's going to be helpful. I didn't even realise we disliked her. Yeah, we do dislike her. Just We don't have a rivalry with any or anything like that with her, but we do have a negative opinion of her. Why is that? Why do, uh, Foreign religion and uh, foreigner culture. That's all. And how's our gold looking like? I think the thing what we've got to do with this character now is just get our gold as good as possible. Make sure we're going to win the election and set it up so Elrang is going to be able to take over without any issues. Last thing we need right now is a rebellion. And we should probably check out our revolt risk. Actually, it's not too bad. It's, it's much better than I thought it would be at this point. And how likely are we to proselytize? Let's have a look. Only 7% yearly. Holy shit, this could take a while. Might be a case of me doing some off-camera proselytization. That's a hard thing to say. Oh, shit. Many cars of the Great Grass Sea have been rallied under the same banner. The leader that managed to unite them all is Drocko. The people of the Grasslands now call their leader the Great Karl. So this is very much like Drogo's Kalasar. Holy shit. Look at that. Wow. Well, I wouldn't have any of uh, the Asossi guys. Rest in peace. That is interesting news. Thank you. Known plot. Now, do we have a chance of maybe assassinating her, maybe killing her? No, nothing at all. She is well too beloved. Like I said, I think it's a case of waiting for her heir to take over so that they can fuck things up on her behalf. Um, sure, let's go watch some jousting. In the meantime, somebody asked me last episode, you didn't talk about the uh, the background to why House Horror survived to go to River and that thing, because I did make a little bit of a backstory just because in the first episode, one of you pointed out that our grandfather was actually 200 years before we were born. Because obviously, House Horde died out during uh, Aegon's Conquest. Which meant that... Okay. Well, R.I.P. Um, my father deserves to be honored with the funeral. I agree. And we'll invite all the Lords and Ladies of the Round to try and get the... Um, to try and get some vassal opinion back up. We need to take rulership focus with this guy. And we will try and have five children. Because I don't want the house to die. What's our air like? Actually, not bad. Just, kind, paranoid. 17 stewardship. He looks a bit strange. He looks a bit, uh, looks a bit shocked. Let's propose him a foreign tour. Off you go. 
Don't come back until you're uh, a better diplomat, because that's a pretty poor diplomacy score. Yeah, so like I was saying, I did actually flesh out the family tree. So if we go back here, um, the father of our original character, Corin Hor, was just uh, was the first Gilded Reaver, Gilded Kraken, Ironborn, if you want to look at it like that. He was the first member of House Hall to have those traits. His father, Blackbeard the Bravosi, this is my headcanon, my fanfic, please do not steal, copyright, my Tumblr, whatever. Um... He was a Bravosi commander, so the, the, the family fled to Bravos after Aegon's conquest. And I'm just basing it on the fact that every family seems to flee to Bravos. You know, Jorah Mormont did it, the Targaryens did it. This guy has fled to Bravos, or I should say Essos. But he fled to Essos, specifically Bravos. He became a good commander there, and when he was there, he sort of learned about why gold was so valuable, and he was a reaver, essentially, on behalf of the Bravosi people. Hence why he's got uh, sympathy for the Eastern Gods. And it was sort of his com com combination, I should say, of um, Eastern gods and his own Ironborn culture handed down to him from his uh, father, Aeron, that became the Gilzy Kraken. And he was born and bred in Bravo, so he is a Bravosi. But then that sort of combined with the Drowned God culture that his, uh, his father had taught him about, and that was passed on and became the Gilded Reaver. So the Gilded Reaver is kind of a combination between that, that gold price and the iron price, there's a little bit of backstory anyway, just to make it a bit more immersive, because I think that's what uh, I think that's what the problem was. And it does make sense that our character had a, a 300-year-old grandfather before that stage. So anyway, that's the backstory. That's why they're Gilded Reavers. That's why they're like Gold and Iron, because uh, they're descendants of Blackbeard. Not the Blackbeard, you know, just a random guy called Blackbeard. Anyway, let's sort out the council. Because like I said, the last thing we need right now is council problems on top of the rebellion we're probably going to have as it is. Let's get you back in pipe proselytizing. Uh, why do you hate me so much? Rival? Oh shit, that's not good. Uh, maybe we could get rid of you? No? Is this guy, this guy's made a lot of enemies. Oh shit. Okay, um. Well. What can we do about that? Let's see what the council think overall. Uh, you don't like me, I assume, because we are... Gilded Reaver, yeah, okay. So because we are picking from Ironborn as well, because we are the, the, the liege of everything... It does mean that we are more likely to... Oh, right. I don't have to target train children. It just appears. It does mean we're more likely to get Ironborn people on our council. Ironborn courtiers. Things like that. Which, in turn, will mean they're going to hate us. You're, you're a pretty good courtier, actually. She's got really good stats. That's our wife. Um, that I found as the uh, last character before we played as this guy. Alright, well now that's just a case of getting rid of this guy's really horrible traits. And we do need to start revoking titles. The other reason is if titles are ours, they're more likely to convert to our culture. Let's see, what about you? You could be a traitor, I think. Count The Count of Volmark, we could take back Harl or Hill. And give that out, either keep it to ourselves or give it out to somebody who is, um... Obviously our religion, our culture. I feel like that's probably a good idea. Alright, let's see if we can't fabricate some plots then. Let's be a bit more scheming and underhanded as this guy. Uh, you'd like to join, wouldn't you? Look at how much gold we've got as well. Holy shit. This guy was just hoarding it. Uh, oh. Are they all that want to join? Oh, God, that's not very really good. 77 gold is not worth it for 5% increased plot power. Now, what can this guy do? Not really much. We still have some wildfire kicking around. Okay, sure. Uh, nothing else we can do, really. Should we rejoin the Alchemist Guild? Oh, we can... Oh, let's join the Cult of Starry Wisdom. Absolutely. Let's be a demon worshipper. That'll help us kill off all of our vassals. I will spend lavishly on... Oh, for... uh, uh, okay, well, I didn't want to be... Uh... I didn't want to be the ruler anyway. It's good while it lasted. We do not serve all that nonsense. Why not? We now have a strong claim on the free city of the Iron Islands. Who's it now? Carl Popeye of House Popeye. Of course. Why wouldn't it be? So we're now playing as Lord Master Wolfgar of Kago's Folly. Wait. Uh, of our... Of our sword. Hmm. That's not right. I need to remember to get rid of that before we, uh... Before we play as our next character. We kept a castle, though, which is nice. Let's build a peasant farm there. God damn it, that's annoying. Um, can we kill you off? This feels like a more fresh start, though, because this guy's only 18, so... Let's take the business focus, because then we can turn that into Midas Touched. Let's, uh, have him get married. We need to be careful, because this is the last member of House Hall that we can play as. Well, let's find him a marriage. Okay, so we want to find someone who is uh, brilliant, preferably. Alright, there's no one. Find character, search all. 
Brilliant. Brilliant. Spelt properly. Married. No. Diplo range. Yes. Gender. Women. All right. And I'm going to sort by lowest stewardship because chances are that will give us people with the brilliant trait rather than uh, the ones who are brilliant steward. Unfortunately, it looks like there aren't anybody else with the brilliant. Oh, there's someone. She's 35, though. A bit risky. Um, she may be the only person. What about you? Brilliant. Grey eminence. Cancer. Oh, that's not good. Um, capable. Brilliant. Hang on a second. Arrange marriage. Her to me. Uh, oh, right. Betrothal. Genius. There we go. No. Oh, god damn it. She's also a randomer. Hmm. Because she's a randomer, it means that we could potentially just invite her to our courts. So we're marker of special interest in case we can't find anyone else. Uh, who else have we got here? Lorathi. Range marriage. Her to... Sorry. Range betrothal. Genius. Her to me. No. Not even matrilineally. Not that I accept matrilineally. I was just seeing if it would uh, change his mind at all. What are you? Oh, you're a brindle man. Yeah, no, I'm not going to marry you. Sorry. Um, I really wish they hadn't named the brilliant trait and brilliant steward the same thing. It would be a lot easier to find characters. Let's wait age instead. Alright. Just looking for the glowing brain. Any glowing brains? The, the only reason I'm not marrying the brindle man, not because I'm a big racist, but because in the books... It says that Brindlemen and uh, men from Westeros and Essos can't have children. Now, I'm not going to risk it. I don't think there would be an in-game feature for that, but I'm not going to risk it just in case they actually can't. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. What about you? You're in Karth. Hang on, you're a nobody. You are an intricate web weaver, ambitious and honorable. Perfect. By favor. No. Send gift. By favor. There we go. All right. She's Karthine, which is fine. And we will go ahead and invite to court and force that favor through. Per perfect. She's a pretty good wife, actually. And if we could get someone with a brilliant stat, that would help out a lot. Let's go ahead and arrange marriage. Her to me. All right, that's a start. We've got ourselves a decent wife. And we will make her our spy master, maybe? She's got a lot of good traits. Um, yeah, let's make her our diplomat instead. Master of Arms is pretty good. Uh, you're not a terrible treasurer. You're also a member of our house. You're a loyalist. Uh, you are a great court tutor. Wow, let's send you a gift. And that's our stepmom, technically. A maester is really good. And you are pretty great. Can we have you proselytize? Uh, there are some people we can have you proselytize, so why not? So we lost the Iron Islands just as fast as we gained them. They are still within the merchant problem now, so it's not a problem. We maybe want to grab some land of our own in that case. The, the best part about this is we could declare war on fellow vassals now. This might have been our best option for expansion. Because we can always rig the election when we want. And it's not like we could do anything with the Iron Islands as it was. Why don't we have you... Fa let's try and take Pike. We can declare war on our fellow vassals. So let's try and take Pike and we'll just push a, push a regular war for it. This was actually pretty much a... Oh, this guy had a load of shit. Holy shit. Uh, why can we use this? So we need to be, uh, slightly better. We can't join the Alchemist Guild because we are not... Okay, right, so I've got a plan of attack here. Let's go for... So when the business focus is done, we'll go for scholarship. If in that time we haven't got children, we will switch to family focus first. Because that's way more important. After that point, we will hopefully have enough to be able to join the Alchemist Guild. Obviously with the Alchemist Guild, we can make wildfire, chuck that a pike, when we get a claim on it. What's our chance of getting a claim on pike? I imagine pretty high, seeing as we are... Uh, 16% yearly, so about 5 years time or so, 5 or 6 years, we should have a claim on Pike. That will help out a little bit there. Let's start collecting taxes in our castle. We did keep our castle, luckily enough. Um, guess keep building that up, sure. This guy's gonna fuck it up and not upgrade this province properly. Not that it matters. Alright then, so we actually want to stay, um, pretty much underneath... We don't want to win elections, is what I'm trying to say. We pretty much want to stay underneath the uh, our new liege, Karl Popeye, as soon as possible. And we want to have a son as well. Is that 20% fertility in this? I think it does buff fertility. I just don't think the, th the thumbnail says that. And let's host a wedding ceremony for ourselves. 
Chance of getting a child at the end of that, so absolutely, let's do that. And I'll spend lavishly, because we've got more than enough gold and nothing to spend it on, really. Let's hire you for the wedding. Let's build up our trade post. That's something I am forgetting to do. Oh, you know what? We can build up our main house. Way more important. Let's do that. Um... Wine cellar for that fertility. Normally, I'd focus on getting stewardship or maybe diplomacy stats from the uh, the map room. But as we're the last surviving member of our house, I feel like fertility is probably a much, much better option at this stage. And you are perfect entertainment for our feast. Let's do it. Sorry? Oh, right. I hereby... What? Sorry? I hereby relinquish my position of Lord Magister of the Iron Islands in favor of Harlan Greyjoy... You fuck! No! The Republic's destroyed! Now I'm gonna have to reload the game! <laughs> God damn it! You idiot! What were you thinking? Okay, we are gonna have to reload here because this is technically game over. Because we don't have any land. We just- we are playing as a Baron at this stage. So we can't do anything. Um... Ah... <sighs> Alright, I'll reload. Hang on a second. Alright, we're back. I think everything's fixed. I think everything's back in order. I got rid of uh, the temporary title of Kago's Folly, which is obviously what we use to rename artifacts. I'm never going to rename another artifact, because I didn't realise it would cause so many issues. Obviously, instead of getting a game over screen, all it's going to do is flip us to feudal, which is just going to break the game even more. So, in theory, we've got nothing to worry about now. Let's go ahead... And get everything set back up, which I probably should have done before we started, but shh, don't tell anyone. Um, I would rather you be a priest. Can I change council position, actually? Uh, let's have you be our... Oh, for fuck's sake. Fine, you're a man at arms. And then I'm going to fire you. And then I'm going to reappoint you somewhere else. Okay. Steward. Okay, we've got nothing good for that. Let's have a look. So I ended up marrying, instead, our father's previous wife. Which, say what you will. I mean, um... You know, she's there, she's got the genius trait, she's a good character, she's still gregarious and everything, so, uh, why not, eh? Um, you will be our diplomat, we'll have a, we've got a pretty decent master at arms, that's pretty good. Um, we still need to hire someone better for that, and, oh god, we've got no decent anybody. Okay, I'm just gonna reset everything, join court, yes, right. Well, that's narrowed that down, thank you. Um, you're pretty good, let's invite you. You are legitimately pretty good. Thank you. Right. I might have to change to monthly auto saves, seeing as the Republic can apparently fall apart in a second. Um, Spy Master, I mean, anyone's better than no one. And Maester is pretty good. Steward, I will genuinely take... Oh, no, you are really, really bad. Okay, I guess we're hiring a new steward then. Let's go for employ a new courtier and a treasurer. You're pretty good. Okay, 15, that's fine. Okay, let's set everything back up here. So, can we actually have him... No. I was going to say, can we have him try and improve it on our leader's behalf? But, of course not. That'd be silly. Let's have you train any potential children. Have you serve our court. And let's have you proselytize whoever in our court is not already gilded cracking. I guess that'd be our wife in that case. Whew. I think we're good. Yeah, that that, that threw me a lot. Then I thought we were going to have some, uh, some problems. Oh. Why is that tooltip showing up? No, it's not because of char info. It's just an unfinished tooltip. Oh, never mind. We've, we've done something well for our... What, what are we? Are we the, um, we're the high steward? Oh, wow, okay. I suppose we do have pretty good stewardship, so... um, I'm trying to seduce my wife. So I, that's one thing I've changed in between this save and the last save, is that uh, I went for the seduction focus rather than the business focus to start off with. We can spend the rest of our life trying to get Midas touched, or Brilliant Steward, or whatever it's called, if that's what we want. But it's going to take us... But we need children immediately. So taking the seduction focus obviously increases fertility, sex appeal, plus it means I can seduce my wife. Um, which is ideal, because that means she'll love us more and there's more chance of kids. Confess my love. So let's go by her stats here. Uh, slothful, chaste. So she probably won't like a lewd suggestion. Maybe confess my love. She's not... Oh, she's got pretty high diplomacy, so why not? Quote love poetry, because she's also gregarious. It didn't work. Blushing and stammering. Sure. The virtue is strong. Plan my next move. Is that not a face you'd want to seduce? I know I would. Uh, let's try this time a lewd suggestion. We do not sow. I gain a claim on the Iron Islands of the Lordship of Orkmont again. Where's Orkmont? We could just push our claim on that immediately. It's there. We could literally just declare war for that and take it. How many men's he got? 864. How many men do we have? 
872. Holy shit. Uh, Virtue is strong with this one. Let's finish seducing our wife. And then I will... Oh, general opinion plus five. That's pretty good. Thanks, wife. Then we will go after Orkmon and finally get some provinces of our own. Okay. Um, confess my love. Sure. We're just going to have to keep trying until eventually she says yes. What can we do? We can go reaving. Let's do that. Earn some money. Get ready for some mercs so we can go for Orkmon. Northern National shall suffer. Disputed lands. I'm going to go for the disputed lands. I'd rather go for the disputed lands. That's like a south Essos, basically. Uh, leave a note for her to meet me by the stream, and then we will quote love poetry again. Come on, what's wrong with you? Can I send you a gift? Can I... How about an artifact? How about some lovely gemstones? Virtue is strong with this one. Flattered. So she's flattered, so it's obviously working. Um, and my character's appealing, apparently. Weird, I didn't realize that. Lustful and kind. He's got a lot going for him. News from Sunspear of a trial by combat. Lord Theoden Ula demanded trial by combat. What happened? He was beheaded. Good work. Good trial. Thank you. I don't know why I care. Okay. Now she likes his 72. Maybe, maybe she'll accept our seduction. Maybe she'll reciprocate a little bit. Come on. No, I should not. There is no rush. Absolutely no rush. Okay, let's start building up um, the actual castle of Lonely Light. I still want to work in these peasant farms. It's where all our men is coming from. So that's going to give us plus 50% morale. Not a huge amount when we've only got 800 men. But when going to war with a guy with almost as many men as us, it's pretty crucial, actually. We failed that raid. Good start. It's a really good start to my guy's career. And we're going to be playing as this guy for a while because he's... Sorry. After listening to the advice of a group of my bannermen led by Mo Lord Manfred Dagon, I hereby enact a series of laws empowering the council. All my hard work ruined... By this idiot, Karl Popeye. Ah, <sighs> okay. Whatever. This is just uh, this is just one of the downsides to me uh, not expecting all of my people to die at once. Let's go to the barber. Can we give him a nice, powerful beard? That's a pretty powerful beard. Oh, that's a that's a pretty powerful beard. That makes him look way more uh, prestigious. That's some nice, prestigious hair. Let's see. Yeah, I can go with... Uh, well, that's changed the background and not his hairstyle at all. Sure. We'll go with that. I think he looks a little better now. Alright, let's attack. And we failed again. Brilliant. Twice in a row. Uh, who did we fi- They fired my wife from the council? You idiots. And now she dislikes me. Oh, for the love of God. This reaving has been a massive failure. Give him some plunder. We haven't got any damn plunder. Have you seen this? We failed every single raid. Give him some plunder. Good lord. Uh, my subject, Tyler... Tyler. Oh, my maester converted to Gilded Kraken. Oh, good work. Great guy. And we need a new master of laws. Great. Sure. Torwald. Look at this guy. Might even have Torwald killed. Torwald, you are terrible. Let's get rid of you. Karl Popeye died of cancer and it's now Ragnall of House Valen here. Apparently he's uh, ugly and deaf. Drunkard. Wounded. Craven. This guy's awful. Do we want to duel with the local master at arms? Well, we have a uh, 25... Personal combat because we have the breastplate stretcher and Kago's folly. Who's the local master at arms? This guy. Uh, minus twenty. Sure, he's he's done for. Strike. Come on, Kago's folly. It's all down to this weapon. Finally, some prestige. Awesome. Well, look at our piety. Oh no. Uh, apparently. Well, I don't know why that's. Okay, sure. That 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 to me looks like he died of an illness. But sure, why not? A scout of spider fit. Oh, okay. Will this one be successful? Successful raid. Finally. Finally. Ten piety. And uh, do we want to duel another master at arms? Okay, let's have a look at this guy. He has none at all. So he's better than the last guy who had negative because of his club foot. It's all over now. That's another man slain. He's really leading in his grandfather's footsteps. Thank God we stole that Dothraki sickle, honestly. Uh, there's no rush. There's no rush. We'll be home soon. We're home. Okay. Uh, does our wife just... Oh, God. She really doesn't like us. God damn it. Um, send her a gift. Award an honorary title. Here we go. You are now our regent. You're welcome. You're now our court tutor. You're welcome. And you're our bodyguard. Congrats. Can we buy her... Uh, can we buy a favor from her to, you know, make her love us? Please. All I've got is money. 
Send her into hiding. Someone's trying to kill her. Do we know who? No, we actually don't. Okay. Um, let's kill Torwald, because he's terrible. Turns out everyone and their mother wants to kill Torwald. Not much of a surprise, given that it's, you know, Torwald and he's shit. Sorry, Torwald. Um, confess my love. God damn it. Look out below. Oh, well, that was quick. It turns out... So sorry? What? Lord Paramount area of the Iron Islands has usurped the title of Kingdom of the Iron Islands from Lord Magister Ragnar the Fat? God damn Greyjoys. Okay, I'm going to reload again. And uh, I think I'll kill some Greyjoys off camera or something along those lines. Otherwise, we are going to lose every single time. Thanks for watching. Next episode, I'm going to try and get this sorted out. See you then.